What up, beauty gang? Welcome back to episode three of my curly hair series, okay? Today we are going to be talking about big chopping and advice and tips for that. If you saw the previous video, it was on transitioning and the advice and tips for that. So basically, I decided to start off the series with the two different ways that you become natural, either by transitioning or big chopping right away. So I'm not going to sit up here and ramble. But let's just hop right into this video. So as I said in episode one, the definition of big Big chop is the process of cutting off the relaxed or permed ends of your hair when transitioning from chemically processed hair to natural hair. So the number one thing that comes to mind when I think of a person big chopping and going through that whole process is confidence is key. Okay, I'll say that again. I feel like that needs to be repeated. Confidence okay is key and even if you aren't 100% confident in it and stuff because it is a drastic change for a female to do because you know the way society is set up females are supposed to have long hair it's supposed to be a part of our feminine being you know but girl don't stun none of that anyway confidence is key even if you aren't 100% confident about it you definitely have to fake it till you make it my mom says faith it till you make it and I mean I strongly believe in that a lot of the time people you know lack confidence with the situation because of fear of others opinions and judgment of this new self transformation that they did and that's why I'm stressing that confidence is very important because you are gonna get those weird looks you are gonna get you know possibly close people that are gonna judge you and you know put you down about the situation but as long as you know that you look good you know that it's something that you want to do for yourself and you have faith in the journey then allow your confidence to outride all those other negative aspects that might come along with big chopping because let me tell you this once your hair is flourishing and healthy and growing and just <laughs> all types of fleek ain't nobody gonna have nothing to say to you believe that and along with keeping confidence first, make sure you're doing what you want during your journey, not what others want. Others don't matter. It is your hair, okay? Your decision, your life. Now as for a tip when big chopping, I would suggest that you try to switch up your natural hair products. Now that you're 100% natural, as I mentioned in the transitioning video, it was important to find like staple products so that you weren't like all over the place with that particular journey. But now that you've big chopped and your hair is all natural, you can go ahead and try out different products that best, you know, define your curl, moisturize your hair, you know, help you maintain it the best. And usually the products that you use during that transitioning phase when you're dealing with two different textures one natural and one damaged it's not going to be the same products that work best for your natural hair now also I had mentioned in the transitioning video that there was three different ways you could go about transitioning you could go straight to the big chop like this video is about you could literally transition by growing out your hair and then big chopping or you could just gradually get your ends trimmed until all the damage is gone now when you do your big chop and you become 100% natural there's no longer a need for regular trim I know a lot of hairstylists and people in general suggest like, oh, every two weeks, every blah, blah. No, 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 no. Everybody's hair is different. Everybody's hair grows different. Everybody's hair goes through a different process. So I probably only trim my hair maybe at most four or five times a year because I take care of my hair very well where it doesn't need a trim as often. I know of some naturals that even trim their hair only once a year so you literally trim your hair when needed. As you start to get to know your hair better you start realizing different things that don't feel right. I don't know why I'm quoting that. It really doesn't feel right. Or you start getting a lot more tangles and shedding and stuff and that's how you'll know it's time to trim your ends. But don't necessarily set any time limit on oh I have to do it here. I have to do here I have to trim it here I have to trim it here you know like that's not necessary ooh 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 now me personally I kind of went through transitioning and a big chop my big chop wasn't as drastic as like cutting off all my hair I kind of went through the transitioning phase of letting it grow out a little bit then big chopping and one thing that I wish I would have did because I, I didn't go to a professional one day I was just in a mirror and I literally just cut off all the heat damage but what I wish I would have did back then was decide on a shape that I wanted my hair when you big chop you can decide on how much hair gets cut off because you're literally starting fresh and 
and new. And the shape is kind of important because as your hair grows out and grows fuller and stuff, I won't say shape is everything, but shape makes your hair look really good. It makes it look really healthy. It just makes it look really kept together. So my suggestion is to definitely decide on the shape that you want your hair to grow out. If you're doing it on your own, if you're going to a professional, whichever one it is, definitely decide on a shape. Because shaping your hair also helps with the volume that your hair has when it starts growing out and it's just gorgeous, just gorgeous. So make sure you get a really good shape in that you would like, whether it's short or long. Mm, mm, mm. This is important. Do not, you guys, compare your Big Chop journey to other people's journey. Everybody's hair growth, the way they retain length, all that is different. You're different people. So just because you and your best friend Becky Big Chop the same day, and Becky sounds like a white girl, and a white girl probably wouldn't Big Chop, but y'all know what I mean. Just because y'all Big Chop on the same day doesn't mean that you guys' hair is going to grow at the same rate. So please, please, please do not compare your journey to others, and don't be discouraged if your hair is growing at a slower rate than others it's coming boo it's coming it's gonna happen for you now this is something that I wish I would have paid attention to when I did my big chop is to not put heat or color on your hair right away after you big chop some people do it and that's not a bad idea but essentially color and heat are both very damaging for some of us the reason we are trying to become 100% natural again in the first place is because we have heat damaged our hair or color damaged our hair. And if you're finally big chopping and you finally have this refresh start, why even risk messing that up? Because you know, you might flat iron your hair one time after you're big chopping and you're damaged all over again. Start over. Or you wanna color your hair and coloring hair dries out hair significantly. I personally can't wait until my hair color completely grows out because I can just tell that it makes my ends so dry sometimes and split so easily and just breakage and I'm just done with it. So I can only imagine if I had like a TWA. You guys should know that if you watch episode one what that means. But I can only imagine if I had that and then I put color in it and my little short fro was dry and stuff like that. That means that it's gonna have a very hard time growing out so I'd highly suggest you not color or apply heat to your hair anytime soon after that big chop allow your hair to have some time you know breathe and, and really embrace its naturalness all right next tip is to make sure you are deep conditioning ladies at least at least once a week you want to make sure that you keep your new refreshed curls moisturized at all times and strong so never forget to deep condition okay you don't want to let that pass by especially if you're someone who wants to try to grow out your hair as fast as possible you got to give it some TLC you got to go ahead and moisturize that bad boy and along with deep conditioning again make sure that you are keeping your hair moisturized so when I mentioned earlier about finding new products that best fit your new healthy hair you want to make sure that you are re-moisturizing and really I don't feel like that's a hard thing to do when you big chop like my best friend has a very cute shortcut TWA type of hairstyle and I, I am so jealous of her sometimes when we have sleepovers because all she does is throw some water from the sink on it scratch it out and then she can go like that's the life so when you've done your big chop make sure that you are remembering to moisturize your hair whether you're wearing it out whether you're putting it in a protective style whatever it is that you're doing keep your hair moisturized now as for growing out your hair and trying to retain your length try some protective styles those tend to help your hair grow significantly fast I know this past year a good four or five maybe six months span I was rocking nothing but wigs and y'all my hair growth has been insane so make sure that you are trying out different protective styles and whatnot if you want your hair to grow because the best way to grow your hair is to honestly leave it alone the less manipulation that you do and all that other stuff that goes into doing your hair the more susceptible your hair is to growing and like I said I've never had that really short big chop type of face in my life but around the time that I big chopped I did start getting into kind of like makeup and jewelry and stuff 
because like it ties back to confidence again we want to feel like women we don't want to lose that feminine side of us just because we've cut off our hair so I mean if you're into that type of thing I'd suggest you start getting into makeup learning how to you know slay your face slay your eyebrows wear some jewelry get your nails done if you want that's just a suggestion if you're struggling with embracing the whole big chop process but yeah you guys that's about all the advice and tips I have for you when it comes to big chopping I promise you guys it will be worth it in the end just ride it out you got this if you have currently already big chopped before seeing this video and you've just done it your mind's all over the place like did I make the right decision girl you did you did okay trust me and I'm going to help you during this journey with this series so be sure to tune in tomorrow to episode number four I really hope you guys enjoyed this video please don't forget to like comment share subscribe if you have any other big chop related questions please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below again beauty gang help each other out if you see a question that you know the answer to go ahead and respond back we are all family here but yeah you guys really hope y'all are enjoying this series too by the way keep the videos rolling and like I said again tune in tomorrow for episode four until next time guys bye